Uba. Uba. No. Sure. Uba. Barch is wanting to play with titties today. Booba. Oh, it's true. His booba is big. <laughs> <laughs> so, today's uh, main topic, before we allow uh, Kyle to uh, do a few things as well. Um, I see you've uh, brought up the Kerbal Space Program thing there. I was actually going to mention that as well. I'm looking forward to it, but at the same time, early access. God, I hate early access so fucking much. It early access has its benefits from a development standpoint. I, I know, I know. It's just I, I wish I could get a game that was finished. Just occasionally, sometimes, you know. Ugh. The age of finished games are over, Butch. It's over. It is. But right, so. Um, diffuse AI, booba. So this has been the topic of the internet for like the last month or so. Everybody's talking about this shit because, well, it's, it's genuinely goddamn amazing. I mean, AI can draw shit that looks pretty gosh darn good. And this is when it's trying to draw realistic, quote unquote. This is the style that the AI does worst because... It does 2D so much better. Because if you look at this picture here, you may be distracted by the booba. And if you are sufficiently distracted by the booba, you will not notice that the book she's holding looks <laughs> very, very weird. That, that her fingers look very, mm -hmm. very, very weird. <laughs> Mutant monster lady. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that that her, her wrist looks a bit snapped. Not to mention the mutant monstrosity sitting behind her. <laughs> Let's not talk about that thing. It's shoulders, <laughs> it's neck, it's breasts are too low. There's a, a bone yep. sticking out. I'm not sure what's going on. The wrist is broken. <laughs> the yep. wrist. Because the, the Diffuse AI has got a lot of little uh, little pinchy-winchy issues here and there. And a lot of people are showing these off just for shits and giggles. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you some pictures here, uh, which is uh, the Diffuse AI trying to make noodles. People quickly realized that AI has problems with noodle, noodles. Very large problems with noodles, as it turns out. Oh, those are pretty bead. <laughs> yes the um AI has a couple of quirks just, just, just a few just a, just a few here and there right but even so it, it, it is genuinely a incredible technology and it has become remarkably popular because of it and a lot of people have been using it and this has caused quite a few little um little issues as well here and there a lot of various issues actually uh, including legal issues now the um somebody mentioned in chat before we started here and i need to remind myself there was a few super chats that got in before we started too and i need to read those but i'm on a roll so a lot of people mentioned that are they pumping the brakes right now and we'll get to the article and why they're doing it in a second are they doing it because they themselves are like worried about what's happening or are they doing it because of uh, legal issues so the issue here is this is a genuine case of technology outpacing a civilization like this is an equivalent of the steam engine basically this shit arrives everyone looks at it and goes like what the fuck and everybody is confused and lost and scared, and you get the Luddites trying to, uh, like, destroy it, etc., and everyone's freaking out. We don't have any rules for this. Like, what's going to happen? Are all of the 2D artists going to die? Um, are all of the railway workers going to die, etc.? And governments around the world have been making some, um, some rumbling noises as well about how they're going to regulate this, because it does present an actual genuine threat in terms of... Um, Stuff like uh, deep fakes, for example, where you can make something that nobody can actually check if is real or not, at the very least not without advanced computer systems. So, you know, that's, uh, that can be a problem, particularly in today's terminally online environment where a uh, 
video of Obama in a kindergarten, for example, with an assault rifle might go viral very, very quickly. But again, the issue is we don't actually have any rules around this. Like, we don't have a law against well, fake pictures on the internet, you know? Nor do we have any sort of... Because another thing people are doing is they've actually been putting up um, AI-generated art on Patreons and stuff and basically pretending to be artists. And the simple fact that somebody can pretend to be an artist and get people to pay them for the art speaks volumes of how good the goddamn software has gotten. But again, like, okay... Is that ethical? Should you be able to charge for art that you... Uh, did you create it? Like, you, you wrote in an algorithm and a bot. Like, is that creation? Does that fulfill the standards? Are there standards? Et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. There's also been more direct problems, like on Pixiv, which is a, uh, a Japanese-language image-sharing site, a pretty, pretty goddamn massive one, where people have been releasing um, AI images and they've claimed that they're real. And simultaneously, they've looked at real art and claimed that that's AI. And they've been tagging it back and forth and it's been pissing off a lot of artists because they get their art tagged as AI and the AI art gets tagged as real art and etc. And everybody's really goddamn confused as to what the hell is happening here. And so, I'll send you uh, another link there. The creators of Stable Diffusion are kind of freaking out a little bit to the point where they have delayed the next, like, big software update to this in sharp contrast to previously. Because they've stated previously, like, you know, no matter what happens, we're always going to be open source. We're always going to, like, have the, the development be open. We're always going to upload shit until, like, eh. No, no. Now, now we've got to go through a, a democratic process, as he says here, because he's worried that the AI might hurt people. I, uh, I don't know how the AI is going to hurt people in the most direct sense, but well, it's he's probably referring to it. In, I don't know, screwing over artists, I guess. Yeah. Eh? Who knows? It's a complicated situation. And the devs behind it are, you know, having a bit of a moment as well. Where, and here's the issue too. The genie is out of the bottle at this point. Like, they, they put the software up. It's open source. Everyone can see how it works. Even if the creators behind it just, like, stop all development now, people have it. People have the source code. They, they, they can just keep making it now. In fact, people have actually made some really awesome shit with it where they've made the tool do things that the creators didn't think it could do and that tells you everything you need to know actually i'll show you um a couple of the things here so uh you can play this little twitter video probably mute it first because god knows if it's using copyrighted music or whatever mm, probably the best that we don't don't want to get tagged with anything Yes. Uh, no, the, the video is not copyrighted, because it's just the dude who's made a video with the Stable Diffusion AI. Mm, are you sure? Yes, I am very sure. Because technically speaking, if we show that footage, we could be tagged with it. No, and if they do, I'll sue them. <laughs> All right. This is the definition of fair use, and I, it's not copyrighted. But... You've got a little, like, uh, animated music video, basically, that looks, again, pretty good. Like, it's got some real weirdness in it, because, again, the AI, it is, it is just an algorithm. It doesn't really know what it's making. It has no artistic sense or anything. And so it's simply, you know, making a thing. And so you get this really freakish, and yet also kind of, in a way, charming little animated video that... Like, it's almost a little bit ghibli, in a way, in, the, in how it's, like, made. It's, it's weird. And to think, again, that this was made by the AI. Like, the AI just drawing out these various scenes, and they clipped them together and made an animated short out of it. And this is something that actually caught the developers by surprise, because they didn't know the AI could do this, where they can just go, like, okay create me an array of images. And each one was slightly different, so they cut it together to be a movie. 
Now, obviously, uh, this is a um, rather scatter shot, so you're going to have a very hard time of making a proper movie, quote-unquote, out of this. But already you can see the, the, well, promise here. If you can manage to write an instruction specific enough to actually make scenes, you could potentially have animated videos created through the AI without the usage of an animation team. That's quite the thing. They've uh, also... <clears throat> I'll send you another one here. There's a bunch of people on Twitter that have done this as well, where they've created a... Um, basically a facial animation software style of it, uh, combined with the Unreal Engine and some other tool as well, where they've created a... You, you can see some issues. I can see the mouth, for example. The mouth kind of lags behind the rest of the face here and there. But still, that's not bad. Like, that is really not bad. There's people who have made um, full-on storyboards out of it, like, I'll send you the link here, with a guy who made, like, a, uh, a short-form horror story, basically, in just the diffuse AI to make, like, uh, broken-down interiors, church in the woods, uh, monsters, and shit like that. And again, you can see the jank, but simultaneously, it's very good. And so we uh, arrive at today's discussion. Like, if the AI can make this, and if the AI can make this fast, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it potentially something that can be used for criminal nonsense? Is it potentially something that could enrich us? Or is it something that could make us poorer? And that's what the creator has been worrying about too, because they didn't figure out that all of this was going to be used for it. Because on the one hand, you now have a situation where somebody who has the creative interest, so you've got the guy who wants to make the short horror story thing, right? But he doesn't have any drawing, pretend, drawing talent or anything like that. So he literally makes the storyboard in Diffusion AI. And yeah, it's a fairly cliched little story, but still, that's something he couldn't have done previously. Simultaneously, you've now kind of cut out the artistic uh, element of it, where you don't need the artist. You don't need uh, the creative input, which might have made it even better, which might have made it look even better, etc., etc. Like, is this going to end up making creative stuff better or worse? Or perhaps it will do neither. It is an interesting uh, technological revolution. Map has AI all over the next year, says chat. Mappers AI. I don't actually know what that is. Does Google know? Ah, AI actually specifically made for animations. That's rather interesting. Hmm. I mean, as a, as a content creator, too, I mean, the opportunities here, theoretically, are incredible. Like, if you can have an AI basically make, say, for example, explainer videos. Like, everybody's watched the explainer videos on YouTube. Some of them are absolutely, enormously popular and takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of animation and a lot of editing. If an AI could do the same job, suddenly you have individuals in the position to do the same thing as, like, Kutzkasakt, for example, for a tenth of the cost. Better, says chat. Strong opinions. AI lacks imagination. Yeah, that's another thing too. But, well, that's where the creative person comes in. Like, if you have the creator individual telling the AI, make this, well, surely that's the same thing, right? You're still creating something. It's just that you have a tool to help you create that thing. It really depends Kibbs on what you muted. want to use it for. No, Kibbs is merely coping and sealing. No, it's just Arch really wants to talk, so I'm just going to let him say his piece and then I'll squeeze in at the end. Squeeze in. Squeeze in. I mean, the thing is, the AI is one of those things where it'll, it'll find a purpose, like we talked about 
because we kind of had this conversation already. Um, but it will uh, it'll stabilize like it always does. A lot of artists I know generally actually think that the tool is going to be pretty useful, but a lot of them are a bit disappointed with it because right now it doesn't actually draw or create. All it does is pull from a composite of art from other artists and then rips it apart and then combines it back together to make something new with it, which isn't like it's transformative, but it's not actually creating anything. It's just giving you what you kind of ask for, but by pulling it apart from other things. Which is yeah, but, interesting as a tool, uh, and it serves a I purpose. I also point out, like, is that not the essence of art? Like, taking inspirations from a thousand different sources and creating something new? Well, not really. Really? Art must be 100% uh, original? Mm, art is understanding and taking ideas from life itself. This doesn't really understand or really do anything. It's just an algorithm. Yeah, but if the... If, see, that's the thing. I view this as a tool. Because it will allow creative individuals to do things that they couldn't possibly dream of. It'll allow somebody who has this brilliant idea for a movie, for example, to make that movie without uh, the whole team usually required to do so. So long as you've got the creative individual, the AI is nothing more than a fancier paintbrush. Oh yeah, it's just like what I mentioned. It is a tool. Just like the digital tablet, when tablet became a thing, people were like, oh my god, you know, traditional art's gonna die out. And that's a genuine concern they had when digital exploded. Because that was the same thing. Nothing really changed except more people use art now than they did before. Like, nothing will really change with this tool, by and large. I, I, think, yeah, I think it will, because like, the, the change will be that it will, it will open up the creative market to a lot more people. Bearing in mind, you know, if it improves sufficiently, which it almost certainly will. Technology today advances by leaps and bounds. And honestly, I... I the big question, of course, which also the creators is asking, like, how is it going to affect creators? Now, I know um, Dan, for example, is actually super excited about this because he's basically of the opinion that if you get outcompeted by a software, you probably weren't worth all that much to begin with. And he views it as exactly that, as a tool, something to, to help him do things. And apparently there's, there's already been several tools that kind of do similar things like he sent me a link for example of um something in what was it nvidia canvas apparently which basically was able to take like uh, stupid looking doodles and make them into fully formed landscapes yeah, there's stuff that does this, and it's been around for a while. I mean, when it comes to 3D animation, there's also programs, I forget what they, it's called, but they do the in-betweens between frames and whatnot. Like, it's kind of been around for a while, and it's nothing really. Like, as far as tools, it just makes things easier for the artist. Less effort is required. This tool is more or less the same thing. Yes. It's also that um, a lot of this has been heavily gated as well a lot of it behind like um, license fees etc or requires very specific hardware so on and so on whereas this is open source at least for the time being i uh, i wonder how long it will remain open source but we'll see we'll we'll see how strong the creator's convictions are shall we say it's also interesting because you see a lot of people who have no idea what they're talking about talk about the subject which, it, that in and of itself is abusing. If you're on Twitter.com, you'll see what I mean. Just look at any Such of the creators' any videos. Subject. Most people who aren't art directors don't know what they're talking about. will blab either in favor or against it. But by and large, I think a lot of people are just looking for something to be hot-headed over. This is the perfect outlet for that, of course, so... But I am starting to notice that it's already actually dying down, and interest in the whole AI stuff is actually beginning to dwindle. Which is something that isn't too surprising, because I think it'll relegate itself back to the creative sphere, and regular normies will just forget about it. Like the thing is, I, I think we'll arrive at a point where AI-generated art will just be there, and 
unless the person who made it specifically mentions it, you won't even know. And that might be where it's supposed to be heading as well. That might actually be the ideal outcome, actually. Because this is... um, I brought up the whole industrial revolution, the steam engine to begin with, because it's somewhat of a similar kind of thing, where you've got a thing, people freak out, like, this is going to replace everybody, like, people aren't going to have a job, etc. But that's just kind of how things work. Like, new things arrive, old things get phased out, and people adapt and change with the changing times. If anything, it's just that it's probably the the shock of how sudden it was, I think. Because this wasn't on most people's radar until the AI appeared. And to a lot of people, it was like, just like, wow, the AI is able to make like full pictures already? Like, what the fuck? Whereas in reality, this has been in work and inter iterations over years and years and years and years and years. Mm, it's just the mainstream finally caught up with what it what was going on and is mildly amused by this interesting bobble but beyond that it's it's just another thing and again there's also the the adaption of it like what we are doing here for example youtube is an evolution on the old school media system and the old school media system died and god <laughs> God bless it for dying. Like, the, the recent G4 debacle is a wonderful example of this. G4 didn't die just because Frost had a freak out about her sexism. It died because it was old. Like, it was old school entertainment. Like, it, it was an MTV show from 2000s. Like, it just it doesn't work anymore. And it was staffed primarily by people from that era as well. And it had a up, excuse me. It had a very much so hey fellow kids kind of vibe to it. Like it was not financially viable. Now they hurried their demise with Frosk, to be sure. But it's simply the you know world moving on. In another 10, 20 years, we'll probably sit here and go like, God damn those metaverse tubers. Why are they doing this to us? I don't think that'll be an issue. <laughs> Considering that that is imploding on uh, itself. I've seen Zuckerberg's latest Metaverse presentation, I don't think so either. It's just a glorified VTuber chat bullet. Or not even... Yeah, basically it is a VTuber chat thing. Like, it's one of those Uh, VR chats. It's worthless. Did did you see... um, Did you see the latest Metaverse presentation thing? I saw some pictures, but uh, generally I... Uh, the, like the, much like the AI debacle thing, like it's about as interesting as watching paint dry. You got two people screeching loudly on either side, and uh, I just can't be fucked to give much fucks about it. Because uh, they had a a thing recently where, after years, they they showed off the next big evolution in the metaverse, and uh, this is this was it. These figures you see here. These, these at best, like, sim-equivalent figures, this is how far the metaverse has gotten in, like, two years with billions of dollars. Like, this, this shit dead on arrival. <laughs> this shit very dead on arrival. It's just not going anywhere. The metaverse thing is just a, it's a sham. Here, hold on, I'll pull up a bigger image for cheat. I, I do think uh, I do think Mark has the right idea, and I, I do think there will be a metaverse eventually, because it's simply where you know the world is heading. We're ever more online, we're ever more connected, etc. And that's probably what's gonna end up happening. But it's it's not gonna be this. Like this just looks like shit, basically. Hell, maybe it'll be Elon's X uh, platform that uh, that does it for us. Metaverse uh, is just sad, says chat. Yeah, yeah, I kind of got to agree on that one. I mean, it's not sad for the developers. The developers are getting fucking tons of money. So, I mean, good for that. It's a money sinkhole is what I've heard from a lot of people in the uh, in that sphere. And uh, you know what? Good for them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I do think the Metaverse is the future, but it's not this Metaverse. Definitely not. He doesn't have the vision for it. It's too... 
normie. Yes, it is painfully normie. Even the normies don't like how normie it is. I think their user base is like less than like 10,000 or something like that. I don't know. It's like fucking ridiculous. It's lower than most yeah. Steam games and not even anywhere near like an MMO, which is funny. Dead on now, arrival. There's also the um, the interesting little thing again, though, because one of the main things that probably is hooking them up is how to actually like make this this world and and make it usable and make it run well and make it portable blah blah blah, blah and all of these issues. Again, if the AI tools eventually catch up to what they're trying to do, you could have an AI tool actually render shit in real time. You would no longer have a need for the fucking stupid ass sim avatars. You would simply have an AI looking at you and going like, ah, draw. Now that's in the future again, but it would probably be how they're going to have to solve it because those avatars just look dreadful <laughs> oh they are sad but yes diffuse ai the uh, the creators are actually frightened by the monster that they have created and their uh, their principles are wavering already it's like yeah we're gonna keep it open source and yeah we're gonna release it constantly nothing's gonna stop us a few days later yeah maybe maybe something will stop us well, nothing good in life is free. Anyone was an idiot if they thought that was going to remain free forever. Well, at this point, see, the issue is they've already released version one. I, I think if they were, if they're planning to monetize it, I think they're fucked anyways, because it's already out in the wild. But hey, they might still try. <laughs> and hey, they might just simply sell out to like Photoshop or something and go like, Photoshop, make well, this tool. And Photoshop's like, yes. What's likely to happen is something like that, or it's going to be like, you know, Clip Studio or any of these programs, because mm -hmm. this isn't you new, this isn't special, this isn't anything interesting, just like everything else. It's going to be like, okay, we're going to monetize it. Clip Studio did the same fucking thing, where it's like they had a better alternative to fucking Adobe for finally drawing art on digital platforms. Fantastic software. Then they switch over to a subscription service. It was going to happen. It was going to happen. Which exists purely to screw you out of money and nothing else. I mean, hey, the updates are free now, so I mean, there's that, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Your monthly subscription cost. But that's nothing out of the ordinary either, because everything, everyone and every goddamn thing when it comes to the industry wants to switch over to subscription services. And they already because are. It's free money. And it's succeeding remarkably well, too. That fucking Game Sorry, Pass really. bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yep, I know. Fucking Game Pass bullshit taking off like a fucking crazy thing. That shit's so successful, it's not even funny. The amount of people I know that use that shit is, is insane. The amount of people I know that are actually fucking playing that Amazon streaming service crap for games, also a thing now. Like, people are gobbling it up. It was only a matter of time till they succeeded, and uh, they're gonna win. Now, I do also believe that a lot of this is due to people having a little bit too much free spending money, and the upcoming nuclear winter will almost certainly fix that. <laughs> well, they'll just have to lower the rates to a more reasonable amount, because everyone will be poor. <laughs> yep. All right, so we'll move on to uh, next topic, but I'm going to do the couple of Super Chats first, because uh, Lord of the Apostle actually sent some in before we even started, so... Lord of the Opossum says, Hi, Ash and Kyle. I am sorry to hear that your favorite K-pop boy band has to go serve in the military. Who? Or what? Kyle. Korean. That's what that stands for. Okay. Yeah. It's like a K-pop. K-pop. Korean pop. They Good have some them. really cringy-looking boy bands. Some excessively cringy-looking boy bands. Sounds like a Korean problem. Well, you know, they've got access to the internet, Kyle, so it's kind of an international problem, and we can only really solve it by, you know, making North Korea all of Korea. My god. North Korea is only one Korea. It's Japan. Yep. Like, there was only ever one <laughs> Korea, and it is North Korea. It all belongs to Or we can return it to the Japanese. Right? Yeah. That could be funny. I'm sure the Koreans would love that. Be like, I'm oh, sure the Koreans would love so that. much. <laughs> the Koreans have a long and proud history under Japanese rulership, and only a few atrocities were ever committed in Korea. They, 
<laughs> you know, competitively speaking, they got off a lot lighter than the Chinese, so, you know. That's true, they were a little bit gentler. So you know what? Yeah. Things couldn't, it could only get better. Yeah, well, I agree. I mean, Korea should either be North Korea or it should be Japan again. I mean, these are the only options we have. Yeah. Then again, there are some really cringy Japanese boy bands too, so perhaps the North Korean solution is the only solution. North Korea is just Japan now. <laughs> Uh, Lord Awesome also says, any update on Warhammer Plus? I think it failed. Yeah, I think it's dead. Oh god, I, I haven't heard that dead, in a while. Warhammer Plus? Yeah, me neither. Like, it's... Fuck, I forgot that was even a thing. Yeah, no, it, it dead, bro. It dead. Is it... Hold on, uh, let's Google it. Warhammer Plus. I'm curious, are they still, like, supporting it? I've never... I forgot this even existed. Warhammer Plus... I think they are, but they switched over to um, a bi a bi weekly thing now, so you no longer get weekly stuff. You get like every other week, you get something. Jesus Christ! Even with all their goddamn money, they couldn't maintain their fucking schedule. How actually hard is it when you have millions of dollars? Well, apparently very, because uh, they they couldn't do it. You're like, we made, like, some crappy videos and some shitty tutorials. Maybe somebody will watch them. It's like, no. <laughs> no. Warhammer Plus. What a fucking... That, see, that's another subscription for goddamn service. Oh! Everybody wants these, and everybody's pushing it. Even Paradox has this shit. Yeah. Ah. See, I, I actually really enjoy, like... Uh the frequently asked questions section for Warmer Plus, because it used to be like, every week you'll get new animated content. Now it says, access to an ever-growing collection of animated Warhammer series. <laughs> uh -huh. so it's you growing. You don't get those weekly anymore. What do you get weekly? Well, you get some bat reports, and you get, you get some painting tutorials. Like, how to paint blue. Oh, Literally, you. I could just YouTube that, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, no, Warhammer Plus is an enormous fucking failure. But like I said when this started, like, this is Games Workshop's big bit. Th this shit has been fully funded for at least two years. Probably more. Like, because they need to try and make this work. Like, this is their big sales pitch. They, they, they're going to continue this shit for as long as they can. And they'll scale back on the content to try and make it pay for itself. And, you uh... I guess we'll we'll see probably a next investor report in another like six seven months I think if they even mention it because last investor report they were like Warhammer Plus it's um you know it's it's doing a thing and then they move on <laughs> good indicators it, it exists we, it's part of our it's part of our merchandising franchise monopoly <laughs> yep. It was it was pretty beautiful. Like they even lied about their views because like it, 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 like our YouTube videos they've got like millions of views, and we looked at the YouTube channel like no, no you haven't. It's like you, do you just count people uh, looking at your thumbnails? Like yes, some you know potentially people could have scrolled past it, so that's basically a, a purchase. <laughs> the yes, way. essentially. Their eyes purchased. No, I, I think <laughs> I think Warp Plus is dead. Like I'm half tempted to just get it for a week to review it, but it's a dead fucking meme. <laughs> it's funny. maybe in another six months if it get really desperate for content. I mean, we must. Uh, Maranga too also asks uh, thoughts on Mana Lords. Actually, Kyle, did you play the Mana Lords demo? No, I did. I decided not to because I, there was no battling. You didn't? Listen. You didn't? I'm a simple creature. You missed I want out on that, that free stream, free stream stuff. Like, do you have any idea how popular that shit was? You little dumbass. Wow, you you're being racist dumbass. to me. You little racism. You little dumbass. That's it. When we play Victoria Three, you have to play Uruguay, and I'll play Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mana Lord was uh, was really cool. Like the demo has obvious limitations and. One of the biggest one was that there wasn't that much to do. Like, I finished building my village basically in three hours, and then I'd used all of the buildings that were currently available. And then you crashed. So there needs to be a... <laughs> yeah, then it crashed, and there was no save game system. Yes. <laughs> Correct. Um, so there, need, there needs to be a lot more, like, 
verticality to it like there's got to be a lot more stuff to build and a lot more like tools to get like there needs to be a lot more production chains and more intricate production chains that needs to be added and the warfare system we need to see how that works out because yeah. it looks great honestly i'm i'm actually you know i was originally a little skeptical because he's like hey, it's one man crew he's gonna pull it off like these stories exactly. are rare. They do happen where a single developer pulls off miracles like this because he's just a savant. Mm -hmm. And I was a little skeptical at first because I was like, ah, you know, are we going to see anything? But after looking at the gameplay footage of the people playing the city builder stuff and watching little blonde bimbo's video on it, I'm actually a little bit more enthused about it, which actually is really reassuring. I hope it, uh, I hope it continues to develop. So I'm a little yeah, hopeful no, like for it. It was good. Like, it was solid. Like, it was clearly early, and it clearly needed a lot more stuff. But it ran. It ran well. You know, it crashed. But, again, early access. Mm -hmm. um, like, the little dude go around and do their stuff. Like, their little, they, there needs to be more animations, too, by the way. That's a thing. Like, there's got to be more animations inside the buildings and shit. A little bit of, a little bit of like, um, Simi style there. That would be fantastic. But is good like it looks very organic it looks very pretty graphically it's extraordinarily impressive for a single man developer like yeah no i th i th actually think it'll be great yeah it has the makings of a good game sometimes you can just see that occasionally where you look at a game and oh, like yeah. that has a lot of potential behind it that one was only making me skeptical because it was one of those where it's like it's pretty ambitious because it's it's two games. Very there's ambitious. a city building aspect, and then there's the warfare aspect. Now we have to see how the warfare stuff plays out, but just from the preview footage stuff alone, with like units being able to traverse backwards while facing the enemy. Uh huh. Oh, yep. and that's such a nice thing. Unit collision, Kyle. <laughs> I don't Do you know what that when is. When Total War had that. <laughs> Unit but it collision used to be a feature, Kyle. is the coolest shit ever, chat. Okay, in Rome 1, you'd order a unit to move through another unit. And your unit that was standing there, that your unit was moving through, would form little columns to allow the other unit to pass through it easier. Mm -hmm. And that was the coolest fucking shit. And modern Total War games, they just blob into each other. Yep. <laughs> there's no unit collision, which means there's no unit well, there's unit collision, but there's no unit collision mechanics. So none of it matters. Oh, cancer. Just blobby. The, the, dream, the dream situation, the dream situation is that the uh, Mana Lord becomes the next Total War. Like, it, we have Total War, except you also can build villages. That's the dream situation. Because I will say this too, the map, bit small. It, it feels really, it feels confined as fuck. And if there's going to be another AI on that map, I'm like, oh, Jesus. I mean, there's supposedly supposed to be multiple players per map. Yeah, which is, like, that map is not that big. Like, that's going to get hectic real goddamn quick. That is one of my concerns, though. Because they're, they're going to need the maps to be bigger, and they're also going to need mm -hmm. to have more players on them. So, yep. like... Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about performance issues and what they're going to have to sacrifice. I'm totally okay with them going sacrificing visuals and fidelity to allow for more units, because that's what matters in a game like that anyways. Yep. There's uh, definitely some hurdles, but they'll hopefully overcome it. Oh, God, you've been torturing chat with that fucking metaverse picture this whole time. Khan, you could have at least showed them the Man Lord Simpy or something. No, no they get to look at this. The They're not giving you enough money. And until they give you more money, they have to look at that. Okay. We'll have look at... Okay, chat. Super chats for Booba. <laughs> it needs to be a lot. Or I'm going to pull up pictures of what's his name? Mark Hamill? No. Mark Himmler? No. Mark Anthony. Birch? No. What's this guy's name? Mark Peterberg? What's the guy's name who made Facebook? <laughs> Mark no, no, Zuckerberg. No, just, um, start bringing up the Diffusion AI husbandos. You know, the people in the German beer holes who are all half naked for some reason. Oh my god, but Mark Zuckerberg's face is so murky. Oh, that's the face of a person. <laughs> Look at that. High fidelity jet. You can even see the little nose hairs. Oh, they're sticking out quite a bit. <laughs> that face, it just looks like such a face, like such a memeable face. Well, chat, how do you feel? Do you feel better? You want to die? I hope so. You should consider the latter option. Starting with sad wings. Time for you to go to heaven. <laughs> nice.
Many problems with Kyle. This is but one of them. Look at his face, though. It's so... It's weird looking. It's not normal. You shouldn't look like that. Ooh. Something's wrong, chat. It's a skin suit. <laughs> More importantly, Kerbal Space Program 2, Kyle. Why are you excited? Like, you don't know what Delta V is. So, our lead programmer is fucking ecstatic about this goddamn thing. Kerbal Space Program 2. If you're not familiar with KSP, it's a game where you build spaceships and launch them into space. It's like, uh, sort of like a... Like a NASA simulator, and it's the best game when it comes to that. Now, the interesting thing is, the early access they have planned for this game is way bigger, I think, than uh, ever was the original. Because the original entered early access as well. So, it's like, eh, it's it's not a big deal to me because they've done this before. It's how they did the first game. And it also allows them to do a lot more. Because in this one, they were going to include multiplayer, which is a big deal. So, you can actually... Comp play together and stuff interstellar travel is a thing now which is super cool they're going to introduce colonies and other things like building bases and stuff so that way you when you play this game like oh my god the multiplayer aspect alone makes that so cool because then you can do like cool deep space exploration missions together and multi-stage projects or col colony projects and stuff like that that's pretty sick it is a very chill game and it looks very cool they released a really big uh a video trailer talking about the reasons why they're entering uh, early access and what they're designed for their, their ideas behind doing so. And I actually, after watching the video, yeah, I very much agree. Like I understand like people like barge and stuff, you know, early access, this early access that, I mean, it does get fucking tiresome, but I'm not going to lie. But with these developers, I mean, considering KSP was a really good game. I'm more than willing to uh, entertain a, an early access game for them from them. Not to mention, I like the idea of just making inter it, like little missiles and shooting down your satellites if I can. That'd be funny. There, there's a, so there's a couple of things. So they've they've re uploaded the roadmap, so it'll enter into early access, and it'll just be like a sandbox. And then they'll introduce science, which sounds stupid to me. Like that's a pretty that is literally the core key component of the game that should be in at launch. But okay, then colonies, then interstellar. Then more interstellar, like more star systems, and then multiplayer. So, like multiplayer is um, a couple of years off, probably. Definitely. It's like, it's like, God, yeah. It sucks one, because you have to wait. Yes. One, I'm worried because basically the entire team has fucked off at this point. So I was like, okay, let's let's see how this works out. And two, it's like, mm, okay. Like, I get it, early access, lets you test things, blah, 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 gets the developer money to continue. I, I get it. I get all of the benefits, but I'm just so sick of getting a game that I'm probably just not even going to be interested in to begin with, because they're just going to start out as a sandbox. And I'm like, oh, cool, KPS, you can pay for it now. You can play it in two years. Like, eh. I mean, that's just the reality. I mean, the, the benefit of early access is it, it sidelines publishers, which is a good thing. Cutting out the middleman. The middleman that wow. forces games to get shipped way before they're ready to be released. Or it's launders KPS money off them. A publisher, though. They do. But early access gives them more resources to work with. And just because you have a publisher, there's different publisher deals. So I'm not sure what the deal is with their publisher, but... It depends, like, how much funding they give you. Sometimes they give you some personnel or some stuff. But there's other caveats that come with that. It's like, uh, we want this game to be out next year, even though it needs seven years in development. But, you know, fuck you. And then <laughs> there you go. You get games like Duke Duke of Forever. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Just push it out the door and see what happens. <laughs> That's it never will fun. be interesting to see. I got it. Yeah, I am. I am very skeptical. Like mostly because of all of the team left. I do hope it's good. Oh, I so do. when it comes to the team, the team actually looks pretty solid from the personnel they have on board. Not to mention the fact that they pulled most of the new team members from the modding community itself, which That's is true. a pretty good sign. One of the best uh, modders for making parts and components was actually brought onto the team to make the ships so that you can build them even more dynamic than you ever could before. So that's pretty good. 
they've made a lot of good moves across the board in my books. Now it's just all on the execution side. There is a small amount of hope. A small amount. Tiny amount. Vanishingly small. Barch's pessimism is rising. And I'm not too worried about you shooting down any of my stuff because you've never played KPS, Kyle. If I put enough debris in orbit, eventually it'll become annoying for you. <laughs> the trick is getting it to stay in orbit. My problem is I can always get it to orbit the sun, which is the problem. I can never get it to come back, though. <laughs> Somewhere in the solar system. Sometimes it impacts into a celestial body. Most times not. Tragedy. See, Kyle started this wrong. Because he was like, KPS is a game about flying spaceships. That's not true. KPS KSP. is a game about crashing KSP, spaceships. you fucking monkey. It is. For me, it always has been. Like, the idea is if I can get out of the atmosphere, I've succeeded. Now, I need to get to the moon. Problem is, is I always overshoot the moon and just keep drifting. Say goodbye, little spaceship man. <laughs> and then he just keeps going. Keep out of the KPS, says Chats. I just have a tendency to use all the fuel as soon as possible. It's so hard to conserve. Must burn fuel. Fair, <laughs> one of the things I really hope they do is, to, is that they add more, like, data inputs. Because that was what annoyed me so much about Kerbal Space Program. The fact that you've got to, like, use the stick to control your fucking ship. No, 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 no. I want a data pad where I can go, okay, so-and-so far after launch, tilt so-and-so many degrees, maintain tilt. I don't want to sit there with my fucking keyboard and have to play press the WS key, which have only two inputs, 100% this way or 100% that way. I believe they fix... I, th I believe they're talking about addressing that, making it so that you don't have to hold the hand of the ships as much, but you also have the option to, if you want to. Yeah, because there are times when you absolutely want manual control, but there are other times where I just want the fucking gun. Because astronauts don't, like, stick steer their fucking spaceships into orbit. I love the idea that they do, though. <laughs> it's very, <laughs> very dumb. It's like, all it's right. Like, yes, Mark, grab the control stick. You'll be under 5Gs, but, you know... <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, Goddamn. That Listen. Very dumb. When we get our first colony up, it'll be a miracle when I resupply it if I don't impact into it. Or somewhere on the planet's surface. <laughs> oh, funny. I hope they don't <laughs> add in food and shit. Because there was a mod that did that, and it was kind of cool, but... It also adds in a lot of just stupid busy work to the game, where it's like, oh, now I'm going to send out fucking supply rockets. And since you've got to do all of it manually... It would be nice once you establish a route that you could have it automated or something like that. Yes. Like, once you've done it once, you should be able to go like, okay, do what I did. And the yeah, goes like, beep, boop. Mm -hmm. the I'd next, be happy with that. The next one I have is not one I wanted to get into too much, but I want to talk about cursory. I'm assuming you've heard about the Bayonetta 3 controversy thing that's going on right now. I don't chat probably. Woman has. whinges at man. Man yep, says, we've... woman, you're lying. Man has receipts. Woman wins. Man gets banned from Twitter. Actually, I thought he just left Twitter. I, the whole thing is a mess, and I was going to pull up this article to use it on the stream, but then I just decided that this thing is just cancer. But basically what's happened is basically, well, just what Arch just summarized it up as. It's one of those cancel culture -y things where she's tried to blackmail a developer from the sounds of it to get more money. And the developer's like, no, I'm not giving you more money to do the voice work. Yeah. All right. So she was offered 4,000 bucks. That's not an inconsequential amount. It's 4,000 fucking dollars for voice acting. Now, I don't know the standards for this, but 4,000 bucks for the voice acting. Like, how many lines are there in Bayonetta 3? Yeah. I don't I, know. I can't imagine there is that much dialogue. It's more of like a weird... You know, I don't really know. I, I look at Bayonetta and I think it looks cringe and I never really want to play it, so I don't really... <laughs> I assume not very much. But it is one of those yeah. things that is worth mentioning because this shit happens in the industry. Sadly... More and more lately, which is uh, not good. Oh, actually, uh, chat is saying four four thousand dollars per session 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was thinking like four thousand dollars per voice acting, like that's not a lot of fucking voice lines. Like they have to say like a few and then like, all right, see you later, bye. Four thousand dollars per session. Really boils down to also how much recording she can actually get done per session. So Jennifer Hale, Miss Generic Female like, Voice Actress, yeah. Like no, I uh, like so twenty K total. 20k total for a voice acting gig. Like, again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Bayonetta has, like, a fucking Shakespearean book's worth of fucking dialogue. Maybe it's War and Peace in video game format. But somehow I doubt it. Yep. I, it's, that's still a lot. $20,000. That's still a lot of fucking money. Listen, all she had to do was just be honest and say, hey... I don't feel like I want to do it for this much. I feel like I'm worth this much. And if they disagree, like, nah, sorry, we don't want to do We're not going to well, yeah. go higher than 4,000. Then you know what they should have done? All right, sorry, but I'm going to go my separate way. That's the professional way of doing it. You know what they didn't do? That. <laughs> That's the key thing as well. Like, all right, let's say you think this is an insulting somehow. How dare you offer me 20? Okay, don't take the job, bitch. Because they found somebody else to take the job for presumably that same wage. Mm hmm. You just you just outbid yourself out of a job, honey. Simple as. Like you didn't want that much money. They found somebody else who was willing to do it for the same amount. Yep. This is not the developer's fault. It isn't. And she wins about like you shouldn't buy it. You should give the money to a charity. Bitch, why? Like serious, serious. Like I see. This is something else that pisses me off so much. This is fucking female privilege at its most extreme. Yep. So woman turns down job. Not that she wasn't offered the job. Not that she couldn't have taken the job. Woman turns down job and then complains for you to not buy the game because she turned down job. Give your money to charity. Fuck the team that worked on this game. See, the, here's the thing. In the industry, like, uh, and at least in the indie side, when, some, when you find somebody and you have to go separate ways because either a creative reason or you just, you know, for whatever reasons, like, nah, I don't see eye to eye, and you're going to part ways. Generally, the idea is that you do it amicably because that way, down the road, that person doesn't try to fuck you later and you don't try to fuck them later because that's just not a healthy relationship to have, is it? Here, this dumb whore fucking decided that, no, I'm going to not part amicably. I'm going to throw a goddamn tantrum and then try to condemn the entire fucking team not just one person, the entire team on that project who is working and busting their ass off on that game to make, you know, to pay their goddamn bills. Fuck all of them. I didn't get my money and I didn't get what I wanted out of this deal. So I'm going to try to sabotage everyone. Fuck everyone's families. Fuck all of them. <laughs> that is not okay. That is taboo in the industry for a reason. And she's rightfully getting a lot of shit for it because, well, she deserves it. Unfortunately, though, she also has a fairly large following and has amassed her little cult to go and harass the developer. I believe the developer actually withdrew from Twitter, which I don't blame him. <laughs> well, he was um, he was actually hit by the Twitter hat in the first because his oh, tweets were like uh, restricted, not protected but restricted. So that was something that Twitter did to him. And the uh, chat's also added in a few details here. So a session goes from a few hours to a full eight. So eight hours, that's a full work day, right? Okay. That's 500 bucks per hour in that case for 4K per session. I think most people would be quite happy to work for $500 a fucking hour, to be entirely honest with you. Yeah, I've, I have a little bit Sounds of... Sounds good to me. I've got a little bit of experience with voice actresses now, and so I have a little bit of an idea, but the amount she's asking for is so ludicrously high, chat. Like, I don't even, I can't even imagine paying somebody that much for a voice line. For just a recording session alone. Like, I've, we've yeah, spent about $500 on voice work right now. And I feel pretty happy with the amount we, we're going to get. Fucking 4000 for just a session? Chet. A session, let me, let me explain this. A, a session could be, you could get like 100 lines done, you could get 1,000 lines done. Or you could get like 10 or 2. Or they could all be garbage and you have to throw them all away. So you just spent 4000 for fucking nothing. That is the problem with... For, for a fucking session. <laughs> you gotta pay for and guaranteeable then, lines. At the end of the day, this is a simple employment problem. You wanted more money. Studio didn't. 
studio found somebody else willing to take the paycheck for you, and now you whinge about it. Like, that... Again, what pisses me off the most is just the fucking entitlement of that. Like, Jesus. Like, you lose a job, now it's other people's responsibility to not... Sp to give their money away to charity because you couldn't land a job. My God. Oh. It is difficult to imagine the mindset of such a person. Yeah, I don't understand it. It's very hard to wrap my head around people like that, because I've yet to encounter somebody like that, and I hope to God I never do. But the idea that somebody could... Also, chat says AI voices. Uh, technically, those are a thing. They're horrific. They actually sound like absolute ass. And very few times can you actually wrangle the damn thing to sound good. Not worth it. Not yet, anyways. Yep. No, it's, uh, to, to me, like, I looked at it, Boog sent me some stuff about it, and I decided not to do a own video about it, because to me it just looks like stupid shit. Like, uh, bitch mad is how I would uh, summarize the situation. What's annoying about it, and the I think the big takeaway from this whole thing is not necessarily just this one instance, but the fact that this shit happens, and the fact that they kind of get away with it in a way that this Jennifer Hale bitch will basically just get more or less be fine like her supporters will just dump money on her like this is not something that should be acceptable in the industry and we should have a higher level of standards this is well, not okay the hope is that this is a self-correcting problem in that she suddenly doesn't get any job offers because i I'll, hope to god yeah i'll tell you this much if i was a pc game developer i'd look at that and go hmm maybe not worth the risk yeah not gonna lie jennifer hale i don't ever want to use you he, if I, even if i could afford you <laughs> like four thousand ludicrous <laughs> rates <laughs> I, again again just i i want i want to stress the kind of the absolute entitlement of being offered four thousand dollars for an eight hour work day and go that's an insult to me like <laughs> fucking hell you dare, uh, you dare summon me for such a meager offering? <laughs> Some sort of like demon. This, <laughs> that is a woman that has not put in a lot of hard work in her life, is what I'll say to that. She has actually worked on a lot of gigs. She's the lady, I think, who plays the female Mass Effect Shepherd. And everybody swears up and down she's the best. But honestly, I think they're, they're all wrong. Male Shep is only good Shep. He's got that perfect soulless voice that just makes you feel like you're committing war crime at every fucking second. <laughs> God damn it, Kyle, you've messed up the two voice actress, you city woman. What did I mess up? It's Jennifer, Jennifer Hale. Jennifer Hale is the new one, apparently. Sides with new Jennifer actress, new Jennifer Hale. Wee, Kibbo's got it backwards. Listen, names Good. and getting them right, not easy. Who is the person who did it then? I could have sworn it was uh, Jennifer Hale. Kyle should be beaten. Hey, you were going along with it too. I don't know. You're, I like you're someone helmet. telling me about this story. All I want to say is that I don't care. <laughs> That's good. Jen Hale is the not the person who complained on Twitter. That was the Bayonetta actress. What's her name now, chat? Jennifer Hale sues Kibbs for $2.75 trillion tomorrow. No! <laughs> I mean, if Alex Jones can be fucking slapped with a fine of a billion dollars, I don't see that as particularly unreasonable. A tragedy, to be certain, but a welcome tragedy for at least one party. <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about briefly is Anno 1800. Its final expansion is coming in, or it's already come in, I think, which adds blimps, and there's actually war blimps now, which is pretty cool. And I think Anno 1800 has panned out to be a really, really good game. But yeah, it was uh, it's a success story for the uh, Epic exclusive, I agree, Kyle. No, 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 <laughs> you Stuck will die. Arch, I want you to burn for your sins against humanity. But before we burn you to death, the one thing I want to talk about quickly here is that Anno 1800 is getting ported to console. And a quick thing I want to say nope. is that this thing is a, like this thing, this game runs very slow in the late game stages and not because people's computers have issues with it though some people do but the engine itself has troubles so yeah i mean they're good that good on them they're making more money blue bite like blue bite is an awesome developer and i hope to god they do they do more video games 
more Anos. See, we could play more I know multiplayer, but Fairman's such a little woman about it. You two got into a fight, and you both apologized and made up to each other. And I'm very proud of well, both of you. I'm very proud. Oh, well, I'm very proud I of one of you. I maintain my position that he's a woman. You two need to grow. Uh, Tyler, chat. Chat. You're not Tyler, right. chat. Yes. You could be Tyler for all I know. Chat, you little fucking tard burglars. You stupid bastards. Now, you understand that how much tard wrangling? Listen, I'm the only person that holds our friend group together. I am literally the linchpin. In. If I don't fucking hold their goddamn little hands when they get into a fight, I swear to God, these little toddlers are just like... Mm, mm. You two, you pissed on my toy in a minute. I'm not gonna charge you anymore. It's like, oh my, f shut the fuck up and sit down. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. It's such a problem. They're such problem children. It's a miracle I've managed to hold this shit together. I didn't want to build the warships, and so he died. And that was not my fault. If it wasn't for me, this friend group wouldn't exist. Cabes is a little slow I agree, chat. Hug and make up arch? Yes. They really do. I know, 1800, Colin. That's old news. Old news, Colin. I really oh, am underappreciated. Okay. You know, I really do a lot for everything, honestly. I really deserve more, honestly. I should be I revered as a this. god, honestly. I don't really see why not. Basically divine already. <laughs> Kibbs is the village bicycle. I agree, Jet. Listen, Village Bicycle in terms of friends, yes, bit of a friend whore. But, that's a good thing. Right. With that, we can wrap up. It's now a long video. Hour long stream. It's what it was intended to be, Kyle, before you tried to ruin it. In fact, Hold we on. could have been done already. Hold on. You're gay. Go on. There. I keep the Grizzly says, computer. what do you think of Racifist's take that AI art is one lawsuit away from putting these programs out of commission? Uh, I don't know the details of his take, but that sounds silly to me. Because... Uh, what did he say again? I don't know. Well, no, no. What, what did he say? Because I might I be able to... I don't know. Like the Grizzly says, what do you think of Racifist's take that AI art is one lawsuit away from putting these programs out of commission? Hmm. Oh. Oh, I understand now. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm pretty sure Razorfist is alluding to the fact that so the AIs don't actually make anything. Um, if that makes sense, chat. They pull basically images like the art picture in the background or the various art that you know your wallpapers on your desktop. It pulls that art and then it uses that art to make new images from it. Now, I'm not sure what the legality of that is, and I don't really want to get into that because that's a fucking can of worms Kibbs doesn't really like dealing with. Uh, but that's probably what he's talking about. These programs uh, often take people's art and do things to it, so I don't know what if there's anything with that. I know like artists can use references, but... Eh. But there, there's validity to that claim. There's also other things there. Wouldn't want to get into that, though. Because I'm not a legal person. I don't know Jack Daly about law stuff. The, but... the issue there are in part transformative. The transformative argument is going to be difficult to, uh, to get around, frankly. Um, and another issue, too, is if you start going after that, like, say that it's using some... Characters from Idol Master, for example, right? Okay. If you start going after it for doing that, where do you draw the line? Because the problem with the with the, the legal system as it is now is if you don't enforce your copyright, you lose it. Straight up. Now, that's not a law that is being enforced anymore, because frankly, it was a retarded law, and it should never have been written the way it was written. And right now, Idol Master doesn't have a copyright. Because everybody's more than happy to use Idol Master's little kawaii anime girls wherever the fuck they want. So theoretically, they don't have the copyright for those characters. But they do because they pretend that they don't see it. And therefore, they have the, the reasonable, the plausible deniability. Like, oh, we didn't know, Your Honor. I had no idea. And if they start going after the AI, now they now you got to start answering the questions. Okay, why are you going after this? What about this? Like, you've clearly recognized this, and you clearly know that this exists because you found me on the site that hosts this other shit. 
Ooh. It is a whole whole can of worms. I didn't even know that one. Apparently you can use it to generate cheese pizza, and sadly I know what that term means. Mm, you're a filthy pervert. That's gentleman. disgusting, well, and I, and I didn't know that. See, back when I had a job in the anti-piracy biz, sometimes you'd stumble on pirate sites. CP wasn't entirely uncommon, and when you encountered it, you had to report it through the correct channels. So you learned the lingo pretty quick. Oh, you disgust me. Go away. Yeah, but he paid me money. Money. That's worse, Kyle. That makes it a crime. <laughs> That's not a crime. My job was not illegal. <laughs> My job was... I, I am the law. <laughs> Kyle has me confessed to a felony chat. That's none of my problem. I turned into Sylvester Stallone. I'm Sylvester Kiblone now. Phil Morse has off-topic question. I'm making a YouTube video, and I want to have a gag in there that involves a product, Twix. Can you use a three-second clip of commercial unfair use, or even use the brand at all? Well, here's the thing. Under fair use, so long as it's transformative, you can use whatever you want. But YouTube isn't going to accept that. And that's why you've got to... See, the thing is, you'll get an automatic strike from a bot, or not strike, a claim, and goes like, hold on, we own this. And they'll do that for advertisement. Like, you can get a copyright claim for showing a company's advertisement, because it's all automated botty nonsense, and you've just got to send in the notice to YouTube going like, fuck off. And that's it. Because the companies, they're abusing this as much as they can, you know, to hope that the, you'll maybe just accept it. A company might claim your advertisement revenue. Uh-huh. No, they're mm -hmm. not. Well, the problem is YouTube... Oh, fuck YouTube. So YouTube has the issue of, technically speaking, fair use and transformative shit means we should... You and I should be able to stream a lot more stuff, but we have to be careful what we stream. Because despite us transforming the content for either reviewing or satirical purposes under fair use, it doesn't matter. We'll get slapped on this channel or my channel or your other channel with uh, copyright uh, claims. Because like, well, actually, this you've, you've used too much of our footage. We are entitled to the revenue, ad revenue of this, this stream or this recording. And it's one of those yeah. things where it's like, no, no, you're not. <laughs> That's not how that works. Yes, and you, you just, you have to basically put in a thing with YouTube saying like, no, fuck off. Because back in the day, there were like guidelines where you could use uh, like 30 seconds of a clip, and then it became 20 seconds, then it became 10 seconds, and now you can't it's use it. None. You used a second of anything, any live footage, you get hit. Mm -hmm. And the, the issue with that is like, the reason why I just use um, uh, images in the little videos, uh, we do when we talk about TV shows is because anything else gets copyright to claimed. And the issue is it if they decide to hold it and like not make it visible, you've then got to wait 24 hours for them to release it, which is better than back in the day when it could take weeks, but 24 hours, like a review of Game of Thrones is older than old moldy cheese after 24 hours. Oh God. Potates poses a, a, a question that I don't like. He says with his little potate body. You know, considering AI draws from existing images, one has to wonder what it's using to generate the cheese pizza. Well, that does I'm assuming it's lot referring of... to Lolly <laughs> in this case. CP. Yeah, but like it can't draw photorealistic, so I'm presuming it's just generating Lolly. Well, I don't know. But where is it getting the reference if it tries to go photorealistic, though? The FBI's data banks. Oh, my God. See, th that's... Otherwise, I'm presuming it's just generating lolly. And I don't agree that lolly is child porn. Because no, it's, it's a not, fucking it's not generating PNG. lolly. It's like pulling, like, when it pulls it, when you try to make real images, it, it generates it using real people. Well, again, the FBI data banks. Or MySpace. Or Facebook, or Instagram, you know, where thousands of ch fucking children go on every day and upload sexy selfies of themselves because what? they're fucking twisted. And because what are you children should not have access to the internet. Barge, what are you doing? Barge like barge digging. <laughs> not literally, like, just go on Twitter. You'll find endless amounts of this.
It's been going on forever. Hell, it's only been in the last couple of years that Twitter's even given a shit about not just like teenagers taking selfies, about straight up child porn. And there's been a huge problem on Twitter, which they haven't given a fuck about. Actually, that's something that's funny. Because that's actually slightly relevant in the anti-piracy world, because I do remember that uh, one thing that I remember seeing was the amount of people that would put false claims in for like lollies and anime art stuff. And then it's like, dude, you do realize like when you when you falsely report stuff to the FBI, when it comes to like lolly drawings or anime art, you do realize that that shit just clogs up the system because the FBI is bloated bureaucratic hellhole and they only dedicate like two people to this shit. And so the more shit you cut fucking shove down their throat, the longer it takes for them to ever get to the actual shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the thing is like, again, there, there is... And yes, chat, I stand by it. Lollies and child porn. You know why? Because child porn requires a child. And a drawing is not a fucking child. See, again, there, this there... references back to, to Kyle's point. I... The FBI and these organizations, instead of just merely collecting this, should be looking for the actual people, traffickers, you know, the people who are victimizing actual children, whereas the .jpegs, you can't hurt their feelings. Like, you, you can't hurt their bodies or souls. They are .jpegs. They do not have emotions. The other thing to remember, Chad, is in the creative sphere, when you're writing a fictitious, you know, piece of work, like, okay, you're writing a story, and something bad happens to the story. And one of your characters is underage, and something traumatic happened to them or whatever. In the creative sphere, you can create whatever the fuck. Because it's like, okay, it serves a narrative purpose. The purpose was to show that the reason why this character developed this way and so negatively was because of this horrible thing that happened to them. Like, George R. R. Martin has a infatuation with horrible things happening to little children all the time. And there's nothing wrong with doing that in a fictitious sense. But the minute it's real people... Well, then that's the minute you go to jail. <laughs> you don't leave. <laughs> Period. And that is the vital difference. Real people and dot JPEGs. Fictitious ideas or art pieces aren't people and don't have rights and never should have rights more than a real living being. People who are actually pedophiles need to be hunted down. And put in prison. And electrocuted repeatedly uh, until they're fixed. No, Kyle. No, <laughs> Kyle. Electrocuted. <laughs> Offending pedophiles. Too late, Barch. I think you might be a pedo. It's time for Shocky Chucky. <laughs> like, I would like to kill these people because of their disease. Like, okay, well, we can extend this. To be fair, it would solve a lot of societal problems if we simply hey. just killed mentally ill people, but details. I didn't say that. I just said we shock them. He's like, that doesn't necessarily mean death. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> You're always so extreme, always 100. I don't know. Kyle. I'm I just electrocuted. I think you get to say that. I'm oh, just yeah, reasonable. Chance actually brings up another wonderful point. Like, Kyle's like, where do they get the material for this? Meanwhile, Netflix produces cuties in the background. No, 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 no. I mean, the thing is... It's in their database. Again, teenagers have access to the internet. I'm sure there is no shortage of materials. They shouldn't be allowed to have the internet. As a they child, shouldn't. I learned I many agree. horrific things. As a kid, I enjoyed the internet. I was like, oh, cool, look at naked whamages. Oh, cool, look at this cool, like, fucking violent movie or violent video game. Nice. But I, Social now... media should come literally with an 18 years age limit, in my opinion. Look at Chad. Look, it's gotten dark. We're only getting started. <laughs> Chad, you're so unimaginative. You're all saying wood chippers. Some of you have to think of something slightly different. Kyle should play New World right now. It's true, chat. It's gotten better now. Chat. I'm always based. I just can't say what I really want to say. I have to control myself, otherwise God will punish me. And then by God, I mean Susan. Boomer <laughs> gives an angry chest. You're just jealous because I can control myself. Todd, to move on, says, I also wondered how easily could one make fake currency as well, where most printers still need artists for the minute details. Well, 
there is a difference there because uh, money has a hell of a lot more security systems than just the image on the bill by now. There's a, there's a fuck ton of things inside of your bill that combines together to make it basically impossible to forge. Uh, so that wouldn't be an issue. Mark James says, So I'm going to shield for Angels Fall first, as they have a Halloween event. Masks right now at the low cost of absolutely nothing. Much like the video game events before the dark times where they had to sell you trash. Carl still hasn't played Angels Fall first enough to Mark DeShame's satisfaction. Can't Mark DeShame. Okay, so Angels Fall first is a pretty cool idea on principle. Problem is the game is dead. It's deader than a doornail. You keep shilling this I game. It, Kyle. But the issue is it's dead. I can. I can revive it. That's the problem. And the problem I'm is sure by reviving it, because any time a content creator streams anything, I found this and Arch knows this too. Whenever I play a game, I notice that a lot, a lot of people buy that game and then start playing it too. And if I host a community event, the amount of people that buy that game almost triples into an incredible amount the more we do it. The issue is, if I don't like that game that much, and I decide to stop playing it, now I've just convinced my audience to buy a game that costs them real-life money. Your fickle ass can't be bothered to play for more than and two And I'm hours. like, yeah, yeah, I, I don't really like playing that. it. And it's like, but you can't well, want to play this with you. I paid like $30 billion. I'm like, well, I sort of thought it was kind of ass. <laughs> Let's play Team Fortress 2. It's free. And they're like, it's free. I paid $30 for this. And you know how that is? It always ends the same. <laughs> That's why I'm always very careful about what like community games we ever pick. Because I don't want people to buy a game only for me to be like, mm, eh, I don't feel like playing it. <laughs> you gotta, gotta, gotta understand. Angels Fall That's First is a there. cool game, though. I do want to say that. You guys should check it out independently of whether a content creator is streaming it. And look at it for yourself and judge fairly. Vrokali says, Arch, have you watched some of the Finnish Lord of the Rings from the 90s? No. Nor am I going to Google that, because it sounds awful. Uh, Trim Archak says, Hello, this is the weekly reminder of checking out Mr. Christopher Everard's bestiary project coming this December. Give him attention and chill him. Good call. Marked a shame. No, not marked a shame. Robert. Robert. No, was it Robert? No, Christopher. Names are hard. I've got my composer's name mixed up with other people now. Yeah, he's a pretty nice guy. We talk to him occasionally. His name is Robert now. Yeah, his name's Robert. Sorry, I've changed your name now. Too bad. You're Hungarian, by the way. <laughs> Unfortunate. Bit of a plot twist. <laughs> but I'm Belgian. Sweet not anymore. Host says, just another industrial revolution incoming with AI that will affect all sectors, not just art. Uh, but let in jihad incoming. Have some superior crowns. Yep. Now, I, I do think they will... I, I don't think this will just be a fad. Like, I think this will be a fad, but I think in a few years' time, this will actually change quite a few things, and it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Glow in the Dark says, Korea is used to being a vassal state. They are, and I believe they should continue to be a vassal state. Well, wow. rude. Rock Paladin says... Hot finale leaked, yet HBO no release episode. Re, really? I don't know what you talk about. Leaks? What? What? Could not possibly have seen leaks, Kyle. No, I have not seen leaks. Would never see leaks. How could get leaks? Hold on, I'm attempting to upset people. It normally works. This is not the time, Kyle. <laughs> attempting to... <laughs> A crafty Huragok says, have you heard of Pixel Planet Pick and Paint? Pixel I, Planet not. Pick and Paint. All right, let's Google it. Pi <laughs> you can pay me for that intro. I can. Pixel Planet. No, not Pixel Paint. Pixel Planet Paint and... Wait, what was it called? Paint and Wait? Uh, yeah, probably. Pixel Planet Color Bad Numbers. It's an app store thing. I'm already disinterested. <laughs> what is this? Well, there you go. It didn't survive contact with Kyle. Uh, is this like a painting program for pixel art? Chad, what is it called? Pixel what, Barge? Pixel what? I didn't get the whole thing. Pixel Planet what? Paint and wait or what? 
Paint and wait. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't remember. Was it wait and paint? I don't fucking remember. Use your stupid yeah, little blonde eyes and things. read the words. Do it. Do it now. Chat, what was it? Was Mark it ashamed? Says Church of the Husk. Time to embrace convergence. Hmm, yes. Oh, there you go. That's uh, actually a... Uh, it's called the Pixel Planter. The Pixel Planter? Pixel Planet is a site. You you boomer, Kyle. You didn't say that. I didn't. If I didn't read that, that didn't happen. The best part about being a streamer is you can just reword how chat writes things. And they're like, Kibbs is basically a god. I'm like, I, oh, I can't believe you said... Oh, this program. Yeah, everybody can draw on this, though. I'm worried about showing this because I'm not sure if there's any weird shit on here. Penises. Yeah. Uh, Mark Deshamed says, We need to use our genetic engineering technology to create kerbals so we can send them to space without risking a human. Oh, we already have those. In North Korea. And South Korea. No, in South Korea, because we don't want those anymore. Wow. True. Mark Deshamed also says, They should have casted Lady Sonia for Bayonetta. Lady... Sonia. Lady Sonia, you know. That's the Conan girl. Right? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. What? No. Oh, I'm that's Red sure Sonia. That's, uh... Fuck. <laughs> yeah, no, judging by the uh, the uh by the Google results, I think this chick is in a slightly different line of work. What kind of work are we talking here, Birch? The uh, erotic kind. <clears throat> Based. <laughs> Gotta make right. baby somehow, chat. New little Our retarded moment. says screen actor Gill's rates are $1,250 per session. She makes four times the actor rate. They gave her a great deal compared to the industry. Well, there you go. Woman <laughs> whinges. Internet freaks out. Be generous. And then all of a sudden they're like, not generous enough. Oh my God. Odd says, she greedy, not even Nola North, one of the top VA, doesn't earn that much with other 400 credited jobs. Mm -hmm. No. Again, woman whines. Honestly, it's it's not surprising that a lot of the internet has come out of, kind of against the whole thing, because, like, you asked for an absurd amount of money. Like, it's actually ridiculous. Artemis Fowl says, Kyle wanted to flex his anti fem chef hatred. He does. Like, he needs to force his opinion into I do. Own. The thing is, this is my soapbox now, too. So, scoot over, Barch. fem chef weak. Anyone who likes fem chef homosexual. <laughs> he truly you, is a weirdo. You must like male chef. He's got that voice that sounds so Will Bang, okay? Like, it's so wonderful. So peaceful, if you will. You're gay, Kyle. Like, unironically. Accept it. I'm not gay. I have relationships with women and sex like with men. <laughs> I feel like this man's voice is very bangable. Also, Kyle, I'm not a homo, though. <laughs> Don't miss me with that um, queer homosexual uh, bullshit. <laughs> Marcus James says, Kibbs holds the group together. Backstab him. I agree. Yeah, if you want to bring oh, down our so friend group... Me. Take care of Kib first. It was fun when he was lagging in barrow trauma. That was amusing. Shut the I fuck up. I do more of that. that I'm gonna fix Artemis that. Foul says only effort Kyle puts in is his killing RPs. Ooh. Yes. I don't do yes. that. Yes. Barch brings me on to save RPs. Rather than we did a good job. We did a good job. Shut the fuck up, Barch. We saved the vampire campaign from Arch. We did. Mark we James him. says the FBI is full of maps. Map. That's a wonderful word, by the way. Uh, Pull out your Kenya says, New world have finally gotten Romans and Egyptians. I know. I'm, I'm actually mildly intrigued, even. Because that's what I wanted New World to have. Like, okay, fuck this whole Britain thing. Just have different cultures. And that one might actually make the world at least a little bit more enjoyable. I can't help but notice, too, that all of the recent reviews are very positive. Like, it, who knows, Kyle? It no. Be good. It's bad. I'm not touching it. It's free to play, Kyle. It wasn't free for me. 
My time is not free yeah. anymore. That's true. <gasps> I can use that as an argument. I can actually use that as an argument. That's wonderful. Yeah, actually, your time is pretty cheap. Uh, it depends on how much money we look need. At the, look at those fucking sceneries. Like, that doesn't actually look bad. Like, finally, I'm looking at the trailer right now. No, finally, no, they've got... It. No. They've got huge, mysterious things. They've got giant things. They've got, like, raw, angry creatures. They've he does got this mystery tip. and magic and shit. He's trying to simp for Amazon. Hold him down. <laughs> now, uh, issue I can see is that the combat is still probably awful. Tragic. So is the questing and everything else. The game is fundamentally flawed. That's the problem. No, no, they did send out that they'd uh, reworked the questing system. So I'm, I don't know how they reworked it. I don't know. It's Amazon. There's little Bezoses that accompany you everywhere you go now, so you're not alone. I wish. They like, probably pay well. It's like, hold my hand. Plus, like, okay. Um, I don't know. No, no, no. I think... Uh, I think it might have to be uh, checked out at some point. Uh, grenade launchers. Robot Egyptians. Barge, give up. Oh my god, chat. Give me the Good fucking shit. hammer. We need to start shit. whacking him until he shuts up. <laughs> Artemis Fowl says, if images have no rights and Kibbs gets JP JPEGged, so he also has no rights. That is correct. The image of Kyle has no rights. That's true. There's no image of me, though. That's, that's the thing. Very specific definitions here. An image does not have rights. There's no image of Kibbs on the internet, so Kibbs is safe. For now. Oh, I did 666 says, funny that you say that, Arch, is here in Canada, we're arguing extending medical assistance in dying to minors and mentally ill to be more inclusive. Good. I'll fix many problems. Wow. Typical barge. You're a minor? Yes. Well, I'm sorry then, Coxhammer. <laughs> like, I'm presuming, you know, medical assistance dying isn't just handed out because you're a minor. Like, that seems a little harsh. Medical assistant like, The great dying. child genocide of Canada. They're just like, all right, there's too many children. Come on, we're going to have like a nice little lunch. And they're like, oh, okay. And then they're all dead. <laughs> they're all, oh, my God. That's kind of funny and sad. <laughs> it's, kind of funny. it's so stupid. Look at the chat. Look at that. Like, look at that. Look at that. Come, come, come. What do you want? We've added a variety of new quests from wave events to tracking and traversal challenges. Tracking and traversal challenges. Jumping puzzles. Whee! Tracking and traversal challenges is not the and one. Quest flow through zones has been optimized. See? Listen, hold on before be you good. open your blonde little mouth. Be good, Paradox, huh? every time there's a patch. Paradox is working on improving the Might AI so that the AI will be better in the next Paradox patch. We promise. And then you play and like, it's stupider. It doesn't even work. It's like, oh, that's okay. In the next patch, we're going to focus on working on the AI frontline system again. <laughs> they don't fix anything. It just gets progressively worse. Oh, you know what we also forgot? The Dune Battle for Rackus game recently released House Carino stuff, and it's pretty good. It's really good. B also said that he wanted to play that with us. B also lied and then never played with us. Nor did he bring That's it up true. ever again. B is a traitor. Oh, you're going to have to play New World instead, I guess. Oh, well, B better fucking fix this before that happens, because otherwise B's ass is gray. It's True. They've increased uh, travel speed. Good. They still need mount, mind you, but... Uh... You need to stop, like, looking into this thing. You know what? This is the problem of chat. I lied to Arch once, and he hasn't let it go. And I lied to him about Eternal Crusade being better. I'm like, Arch, it's better now. And so he reinstalled the game and started playing it with me. And he, he's, I, remember, I remember his fucking little face. He's like, I don't think it's better, Kyle. I think it's kind of worse. <laughs> It's the funniest thing ever. Oh, Kyle. <laughs> New world. Funniest. He's still mad New about world it. is the game we'll play. That'll be my next demand before we play anything else. He's like, it's better now. It's like, no. I don't even care if it's better now. A few hours of suffering at least. A few hours of suffering. See? See? See, if, if, see that's the thing, Kyle. If, if you're right, you'll get away with one session. 
If you're wrong, well, I get to mock you and play it more. You're not going to be right, though. You're going to have to grovel and beg for forgiveness from me again, like you always do. I've every already day. basically talked him into it. Because the thing is, he's going to want me to play something, and I'll be like, kind of. No world. But the I problem is, sigh. the games I want to play with Arch are the game like, in our friend group, we all play games that each other likes to sort of balance it out, right? Because it's what you do. Barch always bad. suggests the worst games, and Kibbs is the one who introduces everyone to the most fun they've ever had. I'm looking out for everyone. I don't know about that. I'm There's the a, hero. Deep Rock Galactic was freaking boring, boy. Deep Rock Galactic is an amazing game, and even if you don't like that game, Earth Defense Force was pretty fun. And don't forget Factorio. We haven't played Factorio multiplayer because you want to play with Bubbles, and I don't want to play with Bubbles. He's because okay. You know what? You know what? He's gonna go over to my stuff and go, like, "No, this is wrong," and then I'll have to shoot him, and then he'll complain <laughs> at me. Bubbles, we have to play with Bubbles, though. It'd be so much funny to see and you. Then two. I'll have to kill him. See, like, it's hold the same on. in Satisfactory. When that's finally finished, I'm gonna have to shoot him, and there's gonna be a lot of PvP in that gameplay. Chat, you don't understand. You gotta see the interactions between Bubbles and Arch. They are the Dota. Yes, chat. <laughs> Dota. Correct. No! He does owe me a lot of fucking Dota. He just adds numbers on there. I don't owe him anything. Uh, I've already paid that we're debt. We're playing fucking New World. <laughs> Give up. <laughs> the other thing he needs to do is he... Oh my god. Chat, this motherfucker actually gets along with Bubbles. Bubbles is hyper-autistic. And is also his, br his brother. It's adorable when they're together. They played fucking Anno 1800 together, and they actually got along. It was the funniest shit ever. We got around along because he did what I told him to do. I was like, Bubbles, go to Africa. And he's like, Bubble, Bubble. And he went. <laughs> he went to the New World, not Africa. And it was great because he was just like, Oh, I'm going. Oh, I'm going. Ooh. He's like, You want some bananas? <laughs> I had to keep bitching at him to send me more bananas. You're getting enough bananas, Bubbles. I never enough bananas. More bananas. You turd. I'm downloading New World, Kyle. You're, you you're done. are your so weak. <laughs> so... Your days are numbered, Kyle. Oh my god. Uh, why did I don't know that one? Uh, Marty Shame says a game isn't dead until Nerd Slayer makes a death of a game video on it. Who? There you go. Nerd Slayer. I don't know. Uh, Never... Gula eight to two. Your weekly reminder that I know wolves on Fenris. Eat my ass, literally. I've Wait, never sir. heard of Nerd Slayer. Hmm, Going for gold 85. I'm very excited for the legend of Terrestria Tabletop. You mean Equestria Tabletop. No. As a plastic crack addict, I'm ready for a new dealer. Also, Arch, do you plan on continuing the Horus Heresy review series? God, no. If not, <laughs> not, don't worry, but they are missed. Listen, I was getting sick of the Horus Heresy when it was just kind of starting to get worse. I've heard very bad things about the next books. I have read some of them. God, the like the master of mankind is an insult. <laughs> and then there's Erida. I, I think I think Arch is done with her, GW. And speaking of plastic crack, well, Legend of Equestria will be a wonderful uh, thing for you. You can play Legend of Equestria. It has little ponies. You know, come walk around, man. Come around. Hey, you can't give it slack anymore because you're part of the team now. So you have to praise it. You still haven't allowed me to make the little Mickey Mouse musketeers. <laughs> That's because you All haven't shown up in the dev server. So Barch is oh, hell-bent. You. you need uh, to give me something to do. It. Well, and then I'll do it, and then I'll present it. You can't be at you. Every, every no day, every no fucking day, I get I up need, in the morning. I need missions. I, I need go, I go to the developer server, and we're working on stuff. Right now, we're working on the core rule set for the tabletop. And, like, Arch never comes in there. Because I, you know what oh, I have to do? I have, have to ask. I have to be like, Arch, come here. We need to talk about your task. And then Arch be like, requires a task to be done. Otherwise, Arch will He's going to stick out his little hand. I'm going to have to hold something. Come in, look at him. Okay. It's like... <laughs> uh, uh, Marfield says, thanks for making my commute entertaining. Breed Kibbs. Yes. Breed Kibbs. Breed Kibbs in New World. This sounds like... So John says, bad. I think some of the woke were trying to cancel that voice actor as she supports blue lives, etc. Well, there you go. You can't do that. That's terrible. Yeah. Uh, Will I to do? Thanks again for Kill Vampire and Escaping RP, Kyle. See, Kyle views himself as the glue. I view him as the acid. You've always brought me to those things for a different purpose, granted, for the BTM one. But exactly. like... 
Birch, oh my god. So the VTM campaign. Arch is like, you should join this. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't think it'll go very well. Who I don't did? know if they can handle me. And the Arch is like, oh, you just don't know. This should, they'll be fine. And then I show up and everyone's like, everyone's first like, oh, we were worried. We were real scared that you were going to do something weird. And I'm just like sitting there like, I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> And then we started to role play, and that's when everything went wrong. <laughs> Vrakali says, Arch, could we get some Sister of Battle Lore videos? Hmm. I'll consider it. <sighs> and finally, Sheldon Barfield, before I start downloading New World, says, Arch and Bubbles Tism. I need more of this. Well, see, sa Satisfactory is getting going along well. Like, we should we should actually pick up Satisfactory at some point. I saw you and Bubbles play it, even after you were like, we're not going to play it and test it. I said like, we're going to test it. soft, gentle little bitch whore. That's not entirely true. Every time uh, we do those whore. test streams to see if the uh, game bitch. actually works. I don't have time to play uh, games on my spare time. Uh, I have to work on our video game or our tabletop, and that's all I have time to do. Tales of Equestria. Uh, wait, Chad is wondering the VTM RP now it's been deleted. I didn't delete it. Barged. Um, it's somewhere. Bar. Oh my God! You fucking. Here's it. When we get it's, a... it's linked to both Rumble and uh, like BitChute, but neither of them works. So. You yeah. little whore. So when we get an office, because Arch and I have talked about getting an office proper one day. When we get this office, I'm going to fucking go in there and fix this goddamn channel because this motherfucker... Oh, cabbages. The amount of people that come into my Discord to complain about your channel's organization. <laughs> I've had it up to here. Look, cabbages. It's very high where my hand was. Cabbages. Up to the ceiling, really. Cabbages. You have no idea how many people complain about your organization skills. Cabbages. And I thought mine was bad, by the way, too. <laughs> Uh, see, he's embarrassed and he's trying to change the subject, but it's not going to work. And Slatimus make noises. Slatimus says, uh, Kibbs, I already explained to you how to get Arch to make content. You have no excuse why you can't get him to do stuff. Kyle's dumb. Besides, Slatimus, you've tried so many baits that have failed. You need to be ashamed of yourself. But Slatimus, some of them Mr. succeed. Slatimus, like, China will invade Taiwan. <laughs> Slatimus was wrong. Slatimus... Oh, God. A while ago, Slutmus was going to bet with me that the uh, Ukrainians would take Kherson in, like, two months. It's, that was six months ago. Like, Slutmus, Slutmus is not as smart as Slutmus thinks he is. Slutmus uh, should be. I think, I think this goes both ways, because I always get Artemis. He'll pop into, like, the room when we're hanging out, and he'll be like, guess what, guys? I'm like, what is it this time, you little glowy? And he's like... Arch's making another video because he'll he'll have finally hooked you with one of the ideas. He does that. He's he's very gloaty. He's very happy about winning. <laughs> Arch is like, no, I did it in my own free this, will. <laughs> this incidentally is why we know Slutimus is a fed because just like the FBI, Slutimus can't keep a secret either. He can't. He's he's well. He's Artemis. He's. Also known as the Guardian, it's synonymous. Slotimus AI to some. Slotimus isn't a fucking squeakrit keeper. He's a goddamn microphone or what do you call it, megalophone. Yep. Anything he you tell him. He has the security <laughs> keeping capabilities of the CIA. It's uh, almost sad. There are YouTubers that are afraid of him. Genuinely terrified, which I find rather funny. They simply don't know how soft and squishy he is. They just don't. And uh, at the end there, Glow in the Dark says, the more I hear about how Kibbs describes his interactions with Arch, the more I think a mother with a three years, five year old child, come here, Arch, you can walk. <laughs> Basically. I think it's the other way around. No, it isn't. I'll be like, come on, Arch, and be like, he'll stick his little hand up and be like, come on, little guy. He's like, okay. <laughs> I'm the one who has to talk him into playing the popular games, like New World. The popular games? That game's basically dead. <laughs> Kyle. That's sexist. Look at Artem... Oh, chat. One of the nicknames Artemis has, by the way, is Fedimus now. Uh, that one was come up by Draconis. So you can call him Fedimus now if you want. 
Uh oh. Papa Tos asks, has Bart lost his Streamlabs login? No, I just can't be asked to uh, to do these. I'll I'll eventually have to host them because Kyle doesn't change images anywhere near often enough for my taste, but I'm too lazy for that now. Plus, I'm going on vacation soon. Hold on. So can't be bothered. What do you mean your Streamlabs aren't related to me? And if you want an image up, you have to send me something. No, you could just do this on your initiative. Take Go to Boobas. Boa. There you go. Boa. Oops, that's Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> there we go. Close that one was sent to me by Chaos Marine. It's kind of cursed, though. Just wait till you see it. Look at the stream. Look at it. Look. I don't want to cut. Look at the stream. In fact, you know Look. what? Thank you all. No. Thank you much for watching. You owe him his... And I hope he donated. To you have to all read again it. Soon. Thank You're you for your generous streamer. donations. And read the Streamlabs. Good day. Read the Streamlabs. Don't you buggy do this. <laughs> you giggle. Oh, that Streamlabs. Mm, Kyle, Kyle. What? He paid money. Read it. You hit the end button already, didn't you? You stupid bastard. <laughs> I actually didn't. Oh, good. good. That was a fake out. Wow. That's a first. Now but read it. Streamlabs is supposed to pop up somewhere else. God well, it. it didn't. He paid money, and now get a he gets it read. Now read it. Let's see. Does it? Oh, there it is. Yes. Uh, Zeon says greetings, Arch and Kibbles. The pony non-safe work AI art is very hot. I'll take your word for it. But now all the big ones are banning the creation of it. Sad, sad days for big booba lovers. Praise Neo the pointless. Look at him. The Fed big misses. booby. Brony art. I'm trying to think how that will look. No, no, no. Uh, Fuzzy Thinker says, Kib's monthly pizza fund returns. Happy with your new release, Art and Law? Will there be a dark tide group for the release? See, Kyle, Kyle's trying to play hard to get. He's trying to play precious. Don't you know if I get dark tide. At the same time, you can see him. They're like, "Bro, we'll do show on streaming." So yeah. I need the stream money, or I go hungry. Job. It's not that I want a simp; it's that I don't want my team to starve or me. He, he wants to. No, no more correctly. He wants a simp for ten cents. It's disgusting. Wow. I like. Oh, God damn it! I am. I am. I think I'll probably get it because, like, you're gonna have to because you told me you'd the, get the, it too. The, the issue is, I'm looking at it and I played it and I was like, I'm just grinding. I yeah, was you really are enjoying myself. It wasn't particularly fun. It was just and you're not going to enjoy yourself because you're going to stream and that's your job. It's not about fun. It's about being sad and miserable and making loud windy sounds. I can stream Command Modern Operations and be happy. You well, know, you could stream a lot of things and be happy, but that's not the point of being a streamer. See, mm. I think you have yet to realize what streaming's really about. It's not about happiness or joy, it's about misery and sadness. Mm. Oh, okay, that's a bit strange. <laughs> Mm. And the sadder you are, the happier chat is. The happier mm. chat is, the more mon mons you get. Tuxedo Blackfoot says, Lol Kips was wrong. Correct. Wrong. Eh, Tuxedo. Usually is. I am right on the most. says, Hello, Bart and Kibbs. Happy Saturday, Kibbs. I found an interesting Squix tab in a Discord. I'm quite glad it's not November just yet. I am now a bit dehydrated and need to get back to work, so here's some money. I'm not going to elaborate further. He, he does have a, a lot of porn on Discord. He's a squex tab. Oh, the sexy squeaks. Yeah, that happens. Condemn him. Listen, fan art Condemn is fan art. Chat. I just make channels for my fan art. So, so happens. Some of the fan art's very lewd. Like that chat fish joke we had where I made fun of chat and I told them they're all fat and stupid and in, in a bucket. And then there was hentai made of it. <laughs> and why? I don't know. <laughs> Peasant Thought says, now it's time for an ad break. Today's episode is sponsored by the Acad Academic Agency, one-stop shop for all things autistic, economic, and learning. I'm joking. Kib Spit. You're the fanboy from the Peggle Me Bunch. When will you play Superpower 2? Oh, God. Superpower right, 2 is the old the one. That That's the, th the third one. He's talking about the other one. Superpower 3 uh, apparently is horrible. Says, Kibs, I have zero idea what you've been referring to. Yes, Letimus. Petimus is quite the glowy chat. Do be careful. Even more glowy than glow in the dark. True. Speaking of, glow in the dark says mummy and cap cat trap kibs. Jesus Christ. That last super, though, that came in. Uh, glow in the dark kibs. Read super chats. Arch, no. Kibs. Screams. There's Read it, no boy. Scene. See, he's starting to do what I do, where you change what the super says to make it sound better. 
And I, you have to do that. Noises. Some of them are a bit snarky, and they don't pay enough for me not to change it. J now look at that Jack one. That one's that's an insult. That's a Jack good insult. Jack Weinmiller says that uh, Dark Tide is better than Homefront Two. No, Homefront Two is better than Dark. You have dyslexia. You're <laughs> swear to God. Well, that's a greater than sign, Kyle. Like, yeah, Homefront no, Two no. is greater than Dark Tide, not the other way around. No, 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 greater than Dark Tide is greater than Homefront Two because the greater than symbol points its mouth towards what it wants to eat. Oh my God, Barge! Oh my head! Do you not know what the greater than symbol is? If you no, if Barge, God help me, chat. If I do this, look at chat. I'm typing in chat. Kibbs is greater than Barge. Because it's... You actually unironically don't know what the greater than symbol is. He doesn't know what the greater than is uh, symbol is, Chet. Help! You're supposed to know what machinery is, and I know that. Fucking Christ, Kyle. Chet. You, you sad little Chet, child. Chet, he laughter. isn't joking. Truly. Help you me. You must be beaten. <laughs> no. That's... that's... That's awful, Kyle. Arch. Jesus Christ. Arch, come here, little guy. He's like, no. Three is greater than two. Yeah, see? I told you, Arch. I told you. I fucking told you. <laughs> yes, and his little mouth is pointing towards what is greater than. Uh-oh. Barch is getting ratioed. Now, Barch, I'm greater than you. <laughs> Yes, chat, you've seen it. Now remember this moment. This is my moment of glory. <laughs> or just like, I should have ended the stream. <laughs> you. He's so sad. How sad, you children. Can tell. <laughs> oh, I'm never going to let him forget this. <laughs> very, very weird. And stupid. Oh, that's very good. I give that a 10 out of 10. Pretty funny. <laughs> Barge, don't be mad. Just let it happen. You literally don't know what the great down symbol means. No, you don't know. Gibbs is smarter <sighs> than you for once. <laughs> You've actually disappointed me quite considerably. <sighs> this is funny. Oh, well, it's not the first time Kyle has made a fool out of himself. Oh, poor Barge. It's okay, I'm pretty smart. And Jack Windmiller says, Homefront 2 is better than Dark Tide. Yep, because that's what he meant. Barge! Yeah, he's a weirdo. Barge, please! <laughs> he is a weirdo. <laughs> oh no, he's doubling down. <laughs> that makes it better, though. <laughs> now, more importantly, where's my cheeseburger? You don't get any. Chat posted a cheeseburger with bacon. Where is it? No, bacon is bad. What? Bacon is normally put on cheeseburger. It just makes it chewy. No, you firstly you fry it to the point it where it's crunchy. Just makes it fucking chewy. Crunchy bad. bacon. Bad. Crunchy bad. bacon. Bad. Barge very is bad. a Democrat. That is a very weird conclusion to make. There, sad wings. I don't even know how you got to that. <laughs> Young, Young Thinker 2 says that Hoverin 2 is better than Dark Tide. Barch, you're being dyslexic on purpose. I'm not stupid. <laughs> I believe you are, Kyle. I believe you are. Until next time, though, chat, thank you all again for all of your super generous donations, and we will see you again next week. Also, well, job 2 is uh, wrong. England Duck. I can't trust kids with math. He learned common core math. Tell us how the boxes work. Again, I kids. can't. I tried streaming how to draw common core math out, and then I got the wrong answer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is the person whose uh, who's wisdom you are taking for granted here. They are taking it for granted. I can't believe it. And now the screen goes dark. Did you like the train, Booba? <laughs>